Hi, my name is Amy and I'm going to show you the parts of an oyster and we're going to talk about how those parts help this oyster survive when it's on the beach. Now, the most important part of the oyster to help it survive is to have a very hard shell. These are very strong. They're made out of calcium carbonate, which is the same material that our bones and our teeth are made out of. Okay, so if we want to get into the oyster, we have to first sever the hinge. Now the hinge is this part of the oyster right here. And the hinge allows the two shells to open and close, kind of like the hinge on a door. Okay, so you use your shucking knife and you sever that hinge, but it still won't open. The two pieces are still kind of stuck together. And that's because they're held together by a very strong muscle called the adductor muscle. So then you have to cut the adductor muscle. And once you cut through that, then you are able to open up the two parts of your oyster, the two shells. So this is what the oyster looks like when you open it up. And first thing you'll notice is this is the adductor muscle, the really strong, firm muscle, and it attaches over here to the other shell and helps hold the pieces together. And these large folds of tissue on top here, this is the mantle. A mantle is another word for cloak. It's kind of like a cape that covers all the organs underneath it. It also has, um, if you can see the dark edge, that's where all the little tentacles are. And the tentacles are like the sensory organs. They are the eyes and the nose and the ears of the oyster. They can tell if danger is coming. They can sense vibrations and they can sense shadows. Um, they can tell when it's a good time to eat. So if I pull back the mantle, then you can see the largest organ of the oyster and that is the gills. Now these are the gills here. What do gills do in a fish? That's right, they help them breathe. Same thing for the oyster. Now there's four layers of these gills. One, two, three. I don't know if you can see all four of them, but there's four of these folds. They also have these tiny beating hairs on them called cilia, and they can take the water and they can have the water pass over the gills and the food, and they can send the food all the way down to the mouth. Now the mouth is over here, and just like our mouth has lips, so does the oyster. These are called labial palps, and they look like little triangles or little leaves, and there's four of them. There's one, two, three, four. These are amazing. They can actually sort the food into what is yummy and edible and what is disgusting, like dirt. So what they don't want to eat actually gets sent out of the oyster at this point as something called pseudofeces or fake poop. Isn't that crazy? Now the real food goes into the mouth and into the stomach. This poochy part here is the stomach. And if we were to dig into the stomach, we could actually see the food that it has been eating, which is like a uh, what algae, plankton, all that yummy food is right there in the stomach. Now, after passing through the stomach, the food will pass into the intestines right here and down to the anal pore, the anus, and that is where the real poop comes out. So right there. Now, the other organ is the heart. And just like us, oysters have a heart. And it's right underneath this big adductor muscle. And this is the heart. See that? And those are the parts of the oyster. 